Good evening. Welcome back to the channel. This video is not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Do your own research, make your own decisions. All right, guys, welcome back. So this is going to be my ICP update video, and I'll be covering some examples of institutional adoption, going back into them and the important takeaways and just kind of going one by one. I'm going to go over about four or five different examples, because in my opinion, these are the biggest developments that have happened. These are the most important things to focus on. Thank you, Eric, for putting all this together. And people are having a difficult time categorizing things based on significance. I'm explaining what I mean by that. So you have a number of legitimate partnerships with the United Nations that have already started to materialize and start to move forward, right? On top of things like one of the largest precious metal refiners on earth, tokenizing their gold on your network, multi-trillion dollar market. But those things kind of get just glossed over and then people go right back to finding the next thing that they need to worry about. Now, understand this. There is a percentage of people in the ecosystem, and I imagine this is just a human characteristic, that spend most of their time searching for the next thing to be worried about. Okay? It's been that way ever since I've been here, and it's never stopped. So most of that happens during, you know, corrective price periods where sentiment's kind of in the shitter, price isn't really moving, and or it's going down. But... If you were to listen to this video where Dominic's talk again, if you just listen to Dominic, you'd be fine, but you don't. You ignore what he says for the most part. You ignore all these important developments that are happening, and then you go, the first, the first Joe Blow that gets on the internet and that even remotely suggests there might be an issue with something, maybe just one use case, maybe whatever, and all of a sudden, this little dot gets turned into Mount Everest. And that's what we're dealing with. And it's not something that's new. It's been going on for a while. So Dominic's openly talking about new paradigms coming together on ICP. And that's just not registering at all. Not sticking at all, right? And the next scary thing, it's like people just latch onto it. And as soon as that kind of passes... Give it a week or two. There'll be some other scary thing that people are worried about. Reminds me of back when we were at $3. The whole uh, death spiral FUD. Because the things that I've seen over the last week or so have been about are use case specific. Now, who was the guy that said that you should evaluate ICP based on individual use cases, because certain use cases would be ready to go before other use cases, because this is a ground up build out. So when you start after launch with ICP, there's a lot of things that have to be built out at the network level, right? To make things easier and more accommodating for developers coming in building at the application level. And that takes time. And sitting here today, if world governments, and if you have a different take on this, let me know. If you can think of some other solution that would be a better candidate for ICP, let me know. But sitting here today, if world governments came together and said, we want a, we need a, a global payment system that can also serve as a Bitcoin payment system, and it needs to have an identity solution tied into it for a global payment system. ICP is the best candidate by far, by a mile, miles. I don't even know what else you would put next to it. On top of that, you can also, it has a built-in governance system, so that would even be more incentive for institutions and or governments looking at a solution like this. On top of that too, it could also be used for personal cloud storage. So, but we're talking about the more basic rudimentary use cases, right? And guys, I've been saying for a very long time, the more complex use cases, that's going to take time. It's just, and we're not even at 64-bit WASM yet. We haven't even got to the point to where they're rolling out these AI smart contracts, and we haven't even started to see all the things they can do yet. And think about, really think about this. Th this highlights what I'm about to say very well. Think about somebody getting caught up in the moment with something in the ICP ecosystem, maybe with, a scaling issue, which could also in part be a design issue, which could also be a not listening to guidance issue, but that's a separate thing. So think about leaving ICP because in your mind, you tell yourself that there's too many limitations, right? 
because of more complex use cases today, October 2024, there's never been a bull market. ICP launched over three years ago, and nobody even there, there seems like there's an intentional effort in the crypto media and with influencers to not talk about it. So if you just look at all those things and you think about where ICP is today, and there's a 20 plus year roadmap, we're a little bit over three years in. And so, so more some of the more complex use cases today may have certain issues because of the time period that we're in. And so you're like, oh, well, I'm going to go somewhere else because ICP has too many limitations. The, the limitations of the other networks is they can't fucking host applications at all, at all, period. They can't store a photo on chain. They can't host AI models. So that's their limitations. Their limitations are a thousand X that of ICP. So think about how delusional in all reality, that that's the best word for it because it's such a loss of perspective that it enters into the delusional category where you're sitting here hyperventilating about ICP's limitations, but, uh, but, but what happens if you go somewhere else? You're going to places that have a million more limitations, right? And so after my last and guys, this might just, I don't even know where the video is going to go from here. I hope I do get to all these different, um, but but I need to get this out first, because if I don't, if I just go straight in to all the different examples of institutional adoption, I'm going to get at least five fucking people that comment in my comment section. Hey, what about this? What about this? Aren't you really concerned about this? Aren't you? No, I'm not. I haven't been concerned once in over three years. And my content has aged better than anybody else online covering ICP. In my last 10 to 15 to 20 videos, especially all the AI videos, are going to age like fine wine. And when that happens, I'm not listening to any more of this shit from anybody else because I don't give a fuck what they have to say. Another thing too, this is very, 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 very important. For people, for future people that cover ICP, right? The more the merrier as far as I'm concerned, right? But there's going to be a lot, guys, Tons of people are going to turn into ICP content creators if the thesis is correct, all right? So get that across. Like, there's going to be tons of people talking about ICP if the thesis is correct. And so the more and more people talking about there's going to be a lot of bad takes. I don't have time to respond to every single one of them or look into every single one of them. My take is going to be, I'm probably going to be right, and they're probably going to be fucking wrong. Because they're coming in late to the game. Myself... Eric and others, we've already put together the next 10 years as far as how this can come together. We actually have a thesis. We've actually laid out a roadmap. We can clearly articulate in our perspective how this can come together. So for other content creators, especially other content creators that start covering ICP at some point in time, if they're not articulating a clear thesis, like if one, most every single content creator you listen to should be able to articulate a clear thesis of how they think this is going to come together. Reason being, why would you be invest? Why would you be covering this space? Why do you feel like you should be talking to other people about this if you yourself have no vision on how this comes together? Whether or not it's right or wrong is a separate thing. Covering stuff in present time and things that have already happened, anybody can do that. We all have access to that information. The real value is laying things out before they happen and making a very detailed case as to why it makes sense for that to play out that way. That's where the value comes in, is knowing about things before they happen, not after the fact. Any old Joe Blow can get online and just cover what we know today and just give their half-baked opinions on everything that we already know, right? And that's what a lot of it turns into. Content for the sake of doing content. Hot takes for the sake of giving a hot take or whatever. Or I'm going to do a video about this because everybody else is doing a video about this. You ever notice how my content is unique and different from everybody else's? And how I just cover the things that I feel like are important, not the things that everybody else feels like are important? Two people looking at the same or similar things coming to drastically different conclusions. And it all comes down to where people put their attention and their focus. So I could be looking at everything with ICP. You could be looking about everything with ICP. I see the most bullish shut up of all time, and you're scared shitless. In my opinion, well, it comes down to multiple different factors, but I'm focused on 
the important details, like the fact that this thing is the only thing that can host applications and artificial intelligence. And they're actively having legitimate partnerships moving forward with the United Nations and other significant institutions like BI, a leader in smart city infrastructure. And then just months later, the first country adopts ICP for smart city infrastructure. You think smart cities might be a big opportunity? You think that might be a part of the future? Have you looked into where all this is going? Seems like it's kind of important. Are the other layer ones going to be able to provide smart city infrastructure? Well, they can't host artificial intelligence. So they might be used in some way, shape, form, fashion as like a token database, but they're not going to be used for smart city infrastructure because they can't host AI models, right? Partnering with the United Nations for universal trusted credentials at a time where it looks like verifiable credentials are going to become a web standard through the World Wide Web Consortium, which Defendi is a member of. That seems like a very big deal. That seems like a bigger deal than whatever bullshit you're worried about. Again, Dominic's openly talking about new paradigms coming together on ICP, and it's just right over people's heads. Not everybody, man, but it's the percentage is growing. And that ties back into the market because I'm telling you right now, all this shit that I get in my comments and that I see in my DMs and that I see on the feed, all of this would evaporate, bam, overnight if price shoots up tomorrow. Price shoots up tomorrow, all this shit, gone. Because that's really most people's concern. Is It's just a lack of conviction. It's that they spend all day hanging out on crypto Twitter where you don't learn anything. You don't learn anything on crypto Twitter. This is what I see. I see a bunch of people surrounding themselves with a bunch of chicken little takes and chicken littles in general. And that's how you find yourself getting out of ICP because from your from what you understand, the limitations are just too much to overcome, even though we're only talking about sp limitations with specific use cases. Um, sitting here today, in October 2024, think about getting out of ICP because you just think the limitations are too bad, and then you go to somewhere else that can't even store a fucking photo. And their only use case maybe is to trade shit coins on Amazon Web Services with solutions that get hacked regularly. That's that's how you lose perspective and find yourself in a, in a much worse position because you couldn't accurately assess the most important things, accurately categorize the most important things. The real things people are looking for is validation with price and public recognition. Those are both lagging indicators. Like if you need to see price, really think about this. If you need to see price shoot up to validate your investment, or if you need to see a bunch of positive price action in order to think it's a good investment, you're late. You're already late to the game. You'll never be in early anywhere ever for any reason. Why? You have to see price action play out before you have conviction. So you would never be early to anything. You should just accept the fact that you'll always be late. And or public recognition. If you're investing in a tech company, and in some ways, their solution is designed to be used by institutions. When institutions start adopting, especially important institutions, whether or not you or I like these institutions is a separate thing. Whether or not they have significance and importance on the global stage is, is the, point of, the point I'm making. And three different legitimate partnerships with the United Nations is a very fucking big deal, especially when you have things like the BI group and other institutions tied into these, especially when this is playing off of things like upcoming likely web standards being changed and you already have a solution that's out that aligns with these web standards that are going to be changed and you're a member of the World Wide Web Consortium when tons of other projects aren't. Yeah, it, people ignore the most important things and then they just decide that whatever it is that they want to cover or talk about or worry about is the most important thing. 
And then they start framing it that way. And they start trying to have this conversation about how big of a problem this is. But in order for you to really see it as that big of a problem, you have to just act like all this stuff never happened. You have to act like all this just never happened. You almost have to suspend reality for a second and forget that ICP can host AI models and applications and these other networks can't even store a photo. You almost have to put all that to the side. Again, the only way to really do that is you have to critique ICP in a vacuum. And that's what it is every single time. Every single time. I just assume people go to Ethereum or Solana that are still bitching. Like, go to Ethereum, go to Solana. In a year from now or in two years from now, when you're like having to admit how dumb of a move that was, it's because you didn't listen. It's because you didn't listen. You spend a lot of time projecting. You're, all these people are outflow, right? They do very, they do, they take in very little information, but they just project. Yeah, there's already a thesis, a blueprint, a roadmap in place, man. A lot of, and, you know, to our credit, thank you, Eric, others. Um, I've asked so many people in the community so many different questions um, over the last, you know, few years. And there's already a thesis, a roadmap, and a blueprint in place. And that was in place before a lot of people started to cover ICP. Okay. So in my opinion, those of us that were here and digging into this had largely figured a lot of this out before a lot of these newer people got it. Now, again, the more the merrier. I'm supportive of anybody and everybody wanting to get the word out about ICP. But as the number of people who are covering ICP grows, and it's going to grow, there's going to be, I just don't have time to respond to every fence sitter take. Why? I just don't have time to do that. I'm not going to have time to do it in the future. And so my response would be, listen to what Dominic and the people at Defini are telling you, and then mute all these other people. Because they're going to be wrong. And unfortunately, by the time that plays out, it's like, you know, it's 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 like reality has to prove them wrong, kind of, right? But the but the issue is, is if, you know, by that point, it's like the opportunity's gone. Evaluate ICP by individual use case. Yeah. It's not ICP. It's you. Okay. ICP is light years ahead of the next closest thing. And I'm even the one that told everybody to pump the brakes on institutional adoption and institutions starting to use the end-to-end -end on-chain model. I'm the one that said that was going to take a longer period of time. I'm the one that said pumps the brakes on that. And so when that actually starts playing out, when that starts happening, long before I expected it, and I'm one of the most bullish people online covering this, how, how am I supposed to sit here today and act concerned? One, the capabilities with AI are going to be significantly bigger than what I thought. Much much, much more advanced than what I thought and years before I thought it was going to be available. On top of that, institutions are already starting to adopt ICP and these things are moving forward. So I'm actually on record saying I think these things are going to be further down the road. So when I see them happening in objective reality much earlier than I thought, what would I look like running around like Chicken Little? But see, that's the thing. I actually put my thesis out there. And what that does is it actually gives the audience some degree of, it, it allows them to have some accountability with me because I've laid my 10-year thesis out there. I put it all out there. I'll tell you what I got right, what I got wrong, and update things as we go. All, everybody else, like, guys, if you're listening to people covering this space, they need to give they need to be able to articulate a thesis. Hey, Joe Blow covering whatever. How do you see all this coming together? Lay out your five to 10 year thesis. And if they don't have one, fucking mute them. Because all they're going to do is give half baked, half ass takes here, there, and everywhere, which add no real value. 
Anybody can talk about what's going on today. Anybody can talk about what was happening last week. If you can't accurately forecast what's coming, there's very little value you can offer outside of how-to videos, which there's value in all that too. But the real value, the real alpha, is laying out the case for why things, why this, the technical case for why things, certain things make sense and why certain, certain things should happen over time before they happen. Foresight, that's the value, okay? Being able to accurately forecast Metalore starting to use ICP's technology, being able to accurately identify that chain key was the big thing, that it was one of the biggest technical innovations in the entire space even two or three years ago, and it was going to be the solution for interoperability for the entire fucking web. Being able to accurately identify that and then explain why that's the case, not just making that statement, explain why chain key was going to be such a big, huge development and be the solution for interoperability. That's exercising foresight. Most people covering the space have no foresight. And that's why they don't talk about what's coming because they have no fucking clue. They have no foresight. They have no conviction themselves. They're LARPing. All right. I'm just going to go over these in a different video. Okay. Because uh, it's kind of hard to do. But I mean, I'll go over just a, a little bit here. But guys, it's like, these are the things to focus on. These are the big fucking deals. Okay. Or you can just go listen to people in retail's opinions all day if you want to. Um, the United Nations, in three different examples, is moving forward with Definity on pretty big initiatives. Seems like a big deal. It seems like a bigger fucking deal than whatever Joe Blow's fucking opinion is. Joe Blow's opinion, who's probably never done anything worth mentioning his entire fucking life. Go ask him what's the most impressive thing that he's built. Ask him what his five to ten year thesis is. Make him explain the five to ten year thesis before you keep watching these people. Because if they if they can't articulate a five to ten year thesis, they're not fucking worth watching, in my opinion. But yeah, here you go. Um, Universal trusted credentials. This ties into a coming web standard. And it's all through the W3C. And I actually got an update on there here, here recently with uh, the lady that works at the UN giving a general update on this. And just talking about all this moving forward. So this is coming from the United Nations. The development program, which includes like 170 different countries. I know this was only supposed to be for roughly 10 countries. But if you go back and you look, Look at the different partners that were involved here. The Monetor Monetary Authority of Singapore. So one, Cambodia was already mentioned. So Cambodia, Monetary Authority of Singapore, and the Bank of Ghana. So potentially 10 different countries. What if there's 10 different countries that are going to move forward with ICP over time because it's going to take time with smart city infrastructure? Seems like a big deal. Seems like a bigger deal than whatever all the fucking chicken littles are worrying about. This aligns with the timeline. And see, that's the big thing. This partnership aligns with the timeline on verifiable credentials. And so you just have a bunch of different things corroborating the direction that all this is going. Already had the solution for this. And credentials, proof of humanity, bots, KYC potentially in the future. This could be used for a lot of different things. And in all reality, will probably align with some regulations that are going to be coming in the future. More reasons for projects for other ecosystems to use ICP, especially when, if, verifiable credentials does become an official web standard. Uh, the voluntary recycling credits. This platform's already built. This was like a year ago. This demo was like a year ago. The platform's already built. And part of this is through BI Group, which is a huge, huge strategic partner for ICP. But again, people don't understand this. People don't understand the concept of strategic partners in the enterprise world because they've never worked with, with strategic partners in the enterprise world. I actually have, okay? My job was to manage the partner channel. So partnering with BI, a leader in smart city infrastructure, already has a smart headquarters in UAE, which looks to be one of the hubs, one of the new tech hubs of the future, right? So you have that going on. 
On top of that, Roland Berger is involved with this. So that large global consulting firm, right? Um, so, and they're positioning this as the global standard. This was endorsed by the COP28 presidency, which was the United Nations Climate Conference. This was one demoed at that conference and endorsed by the presidency. And in partnership with Roland Berger, every institution that uses the VRC platform will onboard ICP. So every single institution that uses this platform will onboard ICP. And by the looks of things, this is going to be the global standard for voluntary recycling credits. AI will also likely be heavily utilized with these platforms and these systems with fully integrated systems and infrastructure for waste management. BHA has done a lot with this. Is just as far as like the recycling bins and everything, AI being tied into all of this, notifications when certain landfills and um, things get too high, need to be emptied, things of that nature, right? Different, you know, AI embedded into certain systems uh, to track recycling and things of that nature. So you had BI involved, Roland Berger, and the United Nations themselves. Then moving on, they're starting to move forward now with Cambodia for smart city infrastructure. Cambodia put this out five years ago, talking about moving to smart cities and all you need to know about smart cities. So five years ago, and now they're moving forward with ICP. ICP hadn't even launched when they put this out. Again, this requires a longer term time horizon and outlook. You can have a shorter term time horizon, but it's not going to fucking change anything. That's the real issue is that people have a six to 12 month time horizon, and this is going to be a 10 to 15 year process. And it's like they use the fact that it's going to be a 10 to 15 year process as a way to like make this seem like it's there's no opportunity. here. No, it's just you got in with a six to 12 month time horizon, having no fucking clue what you were looking at. And now you're just talking out of your ass to try to justify whatever. Entire country with 16 million people onboarding ICP. And Cambodia was also a part of the Universal Trusted Credentials. And they've been putting out papers for five years, further supporting evidence of the implementation process too, which I've been talking about since early 2021, three and a half years. I don't know how many other content creators have been openly talking about this global implementation process over the last three and a half years, but it's probably been less than 1%. At least going back longer than just the last couple of years. It, it might've been, might've started to pick up over the last year or two. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch other content creators because for the most part, I think they're all fucking lost. And that was my opinion from the beginning is that they're all going to be wrong. Nobody has any clue what they're talking about or they're all lying or a mixture of the two. So it's like, I don't give a fuck what they had to say. Why? They've all been wrong. And this could be a proof of concept for countries and cities. Um, and they're already partnered with BI groups. So they're already pretty set up for this. And this looks like this looks like the UTC and the LOI for the smart city infrastructure. Um, that, our, uh, that ICP will be the software provider of choice in Cambodia for the entire country. It does, that's what it looks like right now. Not that that'd be the only technology used in the entire country, but it'd probably be the software of choice. And then you have Metalore and Origin. Again, this is a multi-trillion dollar market. If ICP were just to capture, let's say, 5 to 10%, and this is assuming that it's going to stay roughly around the $10 trillion market, just for gold, okay? So let's just say over time, one, the market cap for gold is going to go up, in my opinion. But two... Let's just call it at 10 trillion. If they just get five to 10% of that tokenized on ICP and they're off to a good start because they have a partnership with one of the largest precious metal refiners on earth and they've already started to change the way they mint their gold to align with this software solution. So let's just say they get five to 10% of the global gold market. That's 500 billion to a trillion dollars in real world assets tokenized on chain. ICP's market cap is $5 billion-ish, $4 billion, $5 billion. 5 to 10% of the global gold market would be $500 billion to a trillion. 
And that's just the real world asset being tokenized itself. That doesn't get into everything else. Opportunities with gold back, stable coins and everything else. Or other metals also being tokenized on chain. This is all while eliminating the need for cybersecurity and IT and protecting 100% of IP while providing the infrastructure to monetize 100% of it. ICP has more significant institutional adoption than the overwhelming majority of this entire space. And I, I might even argue that you have to go one by one and you really have to dig into the details to see because in a lot of situations, it will just say so-and-so is partnering with XYZ institution. And there's no details and you can't really tell whether it's bullshit or not. But with each of these, there have been significant things. It aligns with other things. And there's other institutions involved. And in a number of these scenarios, we've already seen the solution be created and or we've already seen next steps start to move forward. I would argue that they have as significant institutional adoption as pretty much any network, maybe outside of Ethereum, having never had a bull market with little to no coverage. Probably only second to Ethereum given the substance with each of them with ICP. And this doesn't get into TAP protocol, Omnity, Osmosis. We're starting to see cross-chain solutions, starting to use canisters and other projects. So it's this is overwhelmingly more important than anything else retail is talking about. Adoption from institutions. And I've been consistent on this going back to the beginning of my channel. That's the big thing to look for. That's the indicator. OK, that's where the institutions have to show their cards is once they start actually moving forward with a, with a lot of this, with a lot of these solutions, they have to start showing their cards at some point in time. And when that happens, when you see that start to fucking happen, that's the sign. That's the signal. OK, signal. Noise. OK. All this stuff that you're hearing, noise. This is the signal. I've been talking about institutional adoption. And guys, I even put to the side, if you remember this, this is my OG subscribers will remember this. I used to talk about institutional adoption and the importance of institutional adoption and how that was going to be really the thing to watch. That was going to be the thing that was going to tell you what was going on and the timeline and everything else. And so, but I also said that I thought it was going to be later down the road for ICP, as opposed to other networks that could use the hybrid model, integrate with big tech cloud, and to form some type of hybrid solutions, because that's a easier setup than the end-to-end -end on chain build out, right? And so I thought it was going to take a longer time for ICP, but it's already happened. And so I'm being consistent with the same things that I was saying back in 2021, 2022. It's, I would strongly recommend if you're going to invest your time in watching somebody else, get them to articulate a thesis as soon as possible and then hold them accountable for it. Because if not, people can just flip flop all over the fucking place. And, it, and it's the most worthless noise imaginable. And there's a lot of people in this space, not necessarily the ICP space, but just in the crypto space, just creating a bunch of noise. It's all they're doing. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Most people in this space have no fucking clue what they're talking about. And I've also been saying that since the beginning. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, not financial advice. Mute all of this. Or don't. Spend all day panicking if you want to. But this is your problem. You don't know how to accurately categorize issues based on significance. And you'll ignore Dominic explaining the new paradigms coming. And then just go spend all day worrying about some other bullshit. Because you can't look at all these different things and say, okay, this is huge. New paradigm. Huge. This is, eh, you'll get figured out. Not that big of a deal, right? It's just a just a product of how early it is in the ecosystem. And this is a ground up build out. It's you now get worked out. No big deal. You don't know how to do that because you can't differentiate between something that's very important and something that's not a big deal. That's the cold hard truth. And you can just accept that and go do the amount of research and spend the time that you need to 
to feel better about your investment or not. Again, at some point, there's nothing else that I can say because people don't listen. There probably is other things I could say, but people wouldn't listen to that either. If you're not listening to Dominic, you're damn sure not going to listen to what I have said. That's all. But I will say this. My last 10 to 20 videos are going to age like the finest fucking wine on earth. And when that happens, there's going to be some very fucking hard reality checks coming for a number of people. Just letting you know. And I'll wait a year, two years. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'll just kick back and watch it all unfold. But I'm giving out some pretty serious reality checks the second all those videos age like wine because a ton of fucking people ignored them. And they went right fucking back to worrying about some other shit. If you're going to ignore 10, 15 of my videos and then go find the little, the little dot to worry about and then bring that back in my comments, get the fuck out of my comments. Listen to what I'm telling you. How about that? Shut the fuck up and listen to what I'm telling you. And you won't be running around like fucking Chicken Little all the time. That's it. Not financial advice. Take care. Have a good night. I'll see you in the next video.